many of you have ever been to Washington, D.C. and seen the Lincoln Memorial or the Jefferson Memorial or the Washington Monument uh, or any of our other nation capital uh, landmarks that are there to signify the greatness of this country that we live in? How many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon and, and taken pictures of the vastness of this national park and the glory of God's creation and being a part of something like that? How many of you have a hard time remembering even significant events that have happened in your life? And so what we do, especially nowadays with our phones, is we take pictures and videos everywhere we go to try and remember the sights and sounds and experiences we had in all of these places. Well, as we continue our study in the book of Joshua today, they, they didn't have a lot of these things that we do today. So they did something a little bit different. And it's God's way of saying, hey, I want you to remember what happened here. And that's what we're going to look at as we continue our study in the book of Joshua. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we are going through the Bible in five years' period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. By clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing forward to help us be more like Jesus. Well, if you'll remember, in this past chapter yesterday, as we looked at chapter 3, we see Joshua being exalted uh, by God by causing the waters of the Jordan to part in much the same way that the Red Sea did. It was verification for the people of Israel that Joshua truly was the chosen person of God to lead the people of Israel into the land of promise and conquest. And so when they get to the other side, God has some very specific instructions for them. Let's check it out together. When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take up each, each of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in the time to come, What do those stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded and took up the twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, just as the Lord told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and they laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. For the priest bearing the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until evening was finished, that the Lord commanded Joshua to tell the people according to all that, the Moses, uh, all that Moses had commanded Joshua. The people passed over in haste. And when all the people had finished passing over, the ark of the Lord and the priests passed over before the people. The sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the people of Israel, as Moses had told them. About 40,000 ready for war passed over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all of Israel, and they stood in awe of him just as they had stood in awe of Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priest bearing the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priest, Come up out of the Jordan. And when the priest bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord came up from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up on dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. 
And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Well, we see that God didn't want the people of Israel to forget this moment, this idea that Joshua was leading the people and that God, with his mighty hand, had caused the, the river to part in such a way that the people could walk on dry ground. And so he got each one of uh, the tribes and one man from each of those tribes to grab a stone to make a monument for the people of Israel so that when they walked by this this little monument of stones that had been taken up from the Jordan River, the people of Israel would be able to tell their children. They would be able to remember themselves exactly what happened there because they would have those rocks. Where did this happen at? Well, I know it was somewhere around here. This was the marker of where, where this miracle had happened. And now all the people of Israel would be able to remember it together. You know, those memorial uh opportunities in our life concerning our relationship with God are very important for us. And my encouragement for you is, as families and as believers in Jesus Christ is that you and I need to find ways to chronicle significant events concerning our walk with Jesus Christ. When something amazing happens, we need to write it down, take a picture, put it up on a wall, put things there that help people understand and help remind us because we're forgetful. We, we forget over time. We need those reminders. And so if we're at a conference and, and God uses this verse to really dive us in deeper in our relationship with Christ, maybe we go look for a picture or create a picture with that verse in it um, so that we can have it up there. And when our kids ask, why is that verse so important to you? We can have that answer the same way that the people of Israel have the answer for their children concerning these rocks that are there. So start thinking in monumental ways, if you will, concerning the things of God in your household, concerning the things of faith, because those little things that you and I do uh, to do that provide opportunities for conversation with others who may not believe or others we're trying to raise up and train up in the Lord so we can encourage them and get pretty good at sharing our testimony at the same time. So my prayer for you is start memorializing your walk with Jesus. When he does something significant, write it down, put it up, let people see it, let them ask the question why, and then share with the confidence that God gives of the good things that Jesus has done. God bless you. I hope that helps you today, and we will talk with you again tomorrow.